Okay, scientists, let's finish up our SL notes about eukaryotic cells. Um, remember that eukaryotic cells include plants, animals, fungi, and protists. Protists are super fun if you've ever looked at pond water and seen these little things called rotifers or amoeba or paramecium or chlamydomonas. They're very neat to look at. Um, all right. All eukaryotic cells contain these structures right here. You need to know these structures as well as their functions. So you need to know that all eukaryotic cells are surrounded by a plasma membrane made of lipids. I should put made of in front of here. Okay. And that encloses all of this uh, cytoplasm, sometimes referred to as the cytosol. But the cytoplasm, which is that liquid that everything floats in and a lot of reactions happen in. And there are a bunch of ribosomes out here as well. Ribosomes come in two varieties. There are free ribosomes and there are bound ribosomes. Free ribosomes synthesize proteins that are going to stay that stay in the cell. And bound ribosomes synthesize proteins that will leave the cell. Okay. Uh, these are ADS ribosomes. If you remember the prokaryote video, uh, the prokaryotes have 70S ribosomes. ADS means they're a little heavier. Uh, you don't need to know that the S stands for Svedberg units, but that's just a fact. Um, okay. Um, our nucleus inside of our eukaryotic cell is bound by a double membrane with pores and contains DNA that is wrapped around histones. Um, I'll remind you that that DNA bound to histones is in little sections called a nucleosome. That was way back, way back in the uh, first few weeks of school that we mentioned that. All right, uh, it's a double membrane with pores. So what does that mean? If you were, you can see this pore right here and this pore right here and this pore, 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 pore. You can see all these pores here, what that looks like. So if we were to look at it from the side, it would look like this. And right here is our pore. Each of these membranes is a normal lipid bilayer. So it looks kind of like this. Okay, so here's our lipid bilayer. And that right there is a zoom in of just this part right here, which means this membrane also has that as well. Okay, there's a bunch of membrane bound that means that they are surrounded by a membrane, organelles that are floating around inside of the cell. You have the mitochondria that produces ATP that the cell uses to, as energy to power it. You have an endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum contains a lot of bound ribosomes bound ribosomes that package that make uh, proteins that are going to be sent out of the cell. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not contain ribosomes. That's where a lot of lipids, lipids are synthesized that the cell is going to use for other membranes and things like that. You have a Golgi body or a Golgi apparatus or a Golgi complex. Uh, it can be called all kinds of things, just you know, depending on the source that you're uh, hearing about it. But the point of this is to take those um, proteins that are being made here, they come here, get all packaged up, modified and changed, and eventually these things are going to leave the cell. More about that actually in our next section. Um, then we have different kinds of vesicles or vacuoles, including lysosomes. A vesicle or a vacuole, let's write those words down, those are both, those are both just a membrane with some stuff on the inside of it. Uh, we'll, we'll do some more things about vesicles and vacuoles later. Um, a very specific kind of vesicle is a, is a lysosome. This contains digestive enzymes. Remember what that word lys means. 
These are digestive enzymes that will act as a janitor or a security in our cell. It's gonna break stuff down uh, that either is a waste product or just doesn't belong in the cell. <clears throat> Something that's not as um, widely talked about is the cytoskeleton. You have two kinds of structures. You have microtubules and microfilaments. Um, microtubules and microfilaments can, can contribute to the shape of the cell. And they also provide a <clears throat> surface for stuff to move around on on the cell. So the cytoskeleton is this right here. Helps to keep the cell shape. And some things use the cytoskeleton as like a kind of like a railway. You know, it can move along it. Don't forget that plant cells have three unique items. They have a cell wall made of cellulose. They have chloroplasts that do photosynthesis. And they have a vacuole that is very large. It takes up, in some cases, 70% of the cell. And uh, that's used as a storage for all kinds of you know, waters and sugars and things like that. Okay, you do have to know how to identify a lot of these structures under a electron microscope. Uh, these are all found on slides 30 through 50. It seems like a lot of slides, but that's because there's one slide for every single one of these organelles so that you can really get a good idea about what it looks like up close. Because sometimes you can't see them in the big electron micrograph of the whole cell. So what do they look like up close? All right, nucleus is pretty easy to spot. Here it is in our plant cell. Normally has a dark spot in the middle of it. A dark spot is something called the nucleolus. That's where a lot of ribosomes are made. Here's our big nucleus in our animal cell right here. Uh, the mitochondria are pretty easy to spot. Well, let's put a number one there. Let's label this with a number one. Our mitochondria are going to be kind of uh, oval, kind of shaped like a jelly bean. And they have these membranes on the inside that help to increase the surface area. Because after all, those membranes are where the electron transport chain happens. Up here, you can see a mitochondria. Give that a one. There's another mitochondria right there. We'll give that another one. Uh, over here in our plant cell, you can see a few mitochondria hanging out over here. All right. Uh, speaking of our plant cell, our chloroplasts are found. Ooh, that's a bad color for that. How about this one? Okay, that's much better. Uh, we've got all kinds of chloroplasts over here. Uh, you can tell a chloroplast. Here's one down here. Um, because it'll have these stacks. Remember our thylakoid membranes, our stacks of thylakoid membranes on the inside of this membrane. So we've got our sap vacuole. That's just going to be a really large vacuole inside of our plant cell. A lot of water and sugar in there. That's why it's sap. Okay, the Golgi apparatus. I should have labeled that's a number two. Golgi apparatus, that's going to be number three. It's a little tough to see in our big animal cell here. I can see a lot of ribosomes. Golgi is a little tough to find, but we can see our Golgi body right down here or our Golgi apparatus right down here. Uh, I hear a lot of people nowadays referring to this. It look, looks like the Wi-Fi signal. Um, when I was taught this, I was taught that it looks like a stack of pancakes. The RER is real easy to spot. That's gonna look like a whole bunch of tubes and you're gonna see the dots all along it. Each of these dots is a ribosome. This particular cell up here, there's a mitochondria. This particular cell up here, oh my gosh, tons. All of these tubes here have these dots on them. This is all RER. This is a cell that is making a ton of stuff that is a ton that is gonna be uh, sent out of the cell. This is probably a liver cell or a pancreas cell. Those livers and pancreas make a lot of different things. The SER, a little tough to see, um, but it looks like RER without dots on it, but it's, these, these pictures are so grainy that it's, they always look like they have dots on them. So 
I always have a tough time identifying that. Chromosomes tend to look a little bit like little bits of string that are attached in the middle somehow. Um, this isn't a very good picture that has chromosomes in it. Ribosomes are the little dots, the cell wall. That's easy to see in our plant cell. It's this thicker border right here. And the membrane is gonna be this whole outside of the animal cell. And it's gonna be the inner layer of the plant cell. And then finally, one that you maybe have never heard of before is microvilli. Let's give that a number five. That's going to be this right here. The microvilli are little extensions that look a little bit like hairs on the outside of a eukaryotic cell. They help to increase surface area. And surface area is where you maybe absorb or diffuse, absorb something in or diffuse something out. And so by having more villi or more microvilli, you increase that surface area so you can do that stuff more. Okay, uh, let's see. We are almost done already. You have to know five structures that are unique to very specific kinds of cells. All right, let's start off with plastids. Plastids, the most common one that you know of is the chloroplast. Um, so this is, is involved in uh, making and storing food. There are other things other than chloroplasts. There's something called an ameloplast that makes like starch. There's a proteinoplast. Guess what that makes? And where, where was I? Oh yeah, food. Okay, not found in animal cells, not found in fungal cells, definitely found in plant cells. Next up is the cell wall. Uh, pretty obvious function for the cell wall uh, protection. Uh, but we can also say that it gives the cell its shape. All right. Um, definitely not in an animal cell and definitely in the fungal and plant cells. In fungal cells, it is made of a substance called chitin. And in plant cells, it's made of a substance called cellulose. Vacuoles. Vacuoles are storage, uh, mostly for water or waste products. Um, let's see, these are found in everything. So why are we mentioning this? Um, so that's definitely in plant cells. But in plant cells, they are normally very small and they are normally temporary. All right, in fungal cells and plant cells, you will also find vacuoles. Um, these are used, to switch to blue here, to store water, but also sometimes they are pumped full of water to push on the cell wall so that it maintains its shape. And when it does that, it's creating something called turgor pressure. So that's pushing on the cell wall so that the cell wall can keep its shape, turgor pressure. All right, next up are centrioles. Centrioles are these little structures um, that organize uh, microtubules to do some of the things that they do. Definitely found in animal cells, not found in plant cells, and sometimes found in, oh, I got that backwards. Erase you. Okay. Uh, definitely not found in fungal cells and definitely found in plant cells. Oh, I think I had it right. I just set it backwards. Okay. Um, in animal cells, they help to organize the spindle during mitosis. Spindle during mitosis. That's where the thing that makes all those microtubules that reach out and grab the chromosomes to pull them. Okay. Uh, but in plant cells, 
They are only found in the male parts of moss and ferns. When we get to plants, we'll talk about the life cycle of plants and mosses and, and ferns have a, um, a specific male and female parts to them that are all on the same plant together. And the male parts have these uh, centrioles in them. Uh, the same thing goes with cilia and flagella. They are also found on the male parts of mosses and ferns. Um, they are not found in fungal cells, really, um, except for one tiny, tiny exception that we're not going to worry about. Uh, and then cilia and flagella are found in, in many animal cells, uh, not all. So what's the difference between them? Cilia are small and used to move things around. Sometimes it moves the whole cell. More often than not, it moves stuff around the cells. And flagella are very long and whip-like, and they are used for uh, motion or movement. Uh, the most common one that we're aware of, that, you, that you're probably familiar with, is in the male gamete. Sperm have a flagella to motor them around wherever they need to go. Okay, that is it for eukaryotes. Oh, what did I do? Um, that is it for eukaryotes, except for our last little bit here. This is it. This is a quick one. There are some eukaryotes that are a little atypical. When you put A in front of something, it means not. So these are things that are not typical. Normally, our eukaryotic cells have just one nucleus, uh, but these are all exceptions that have either more or no nuclei. So skeletal muscle cells are the first ones. They are so long that they have to have a lot of nuclei in order to produce all of the materials that they need. So they need those DNA instructions all along their cells. Down here we have a couple of long skeletal muscle cells. And uh, here's a whole bunch of nuclei just in one of them. So by having the nuclei all spread out, you can make lots of copies of mRNAs all along the whole length of this. And uh, those mRNAs will be read to make the proteins that your cells need to survive. A, once again, if A means no, septate, a septum is a divider. Think about the septum in your nose that divides your right and left nostril. You have a septum in your heart that separates your right and left side of your heart. So an aseptite, fungal hyphae, uh, fungal meaning fungus. A hyphae is kind of like a fungus root. They're not really roots, but they serve a similar function. But these have no dividers or no partitions between their cells, and therefore they look like they have lots of nuclei. So I could only have a drawing of this here because fungus cells have a has a, have a cell wall around them made of chitin, and so we can't really see the nucleus on the inside of them. Okay, so those are the many nuclei ex exceptions. Now we have two no nuclei exceptions. The first are red blood cells. Red blood cells is just a membrane with a lot of cytoplasm inside of it, so there's some fluid that everything floats in, and then a lot, and I mean a lot, of hemoglobin proteins. A typical red blood cell has about 250 million hemoglobin proteins in it. And each hemoglobin protein has four smaller proteins on it, which means that there are one billion, one billion single hemoglobin proteins in there, and each full hemoglobin is a uh, combination of four of them. All right, finally up, we have phloem sieve tube elements. Phloem move food around plants. So like think sugar water. So think like sugar water. Um, so they, this one's weird. They have nuclei as they're maturing, but once they're mature, there's no need for them. They just need to become like kind of tubes. And so the nuclei go away at that point. Uh, once again, remember that plants have a hard cell wall, so we can't really take a picture of something with no nucleus when we can't see through the wall.
All right, now that's really it. SL notes done.